Hi guys, how are you? Today we're going to continue with naming covalent compounds. This is also in chapter 6 and it's on page 171. So if you have your books, please open it on page uh, 170, uh, 175. Sorry, one, page 175. Uh, there we have how we're going to name covalent compounds. For you to remember, a covalent compound is a nonmetal plus another nonmetal. Alright, we're clear in this. Ionic bond is metal and a nonmetal. Covalent bond is nonmetal and nonmetal. That's why you had a homework in which you had to identify which was which. So naming covalent compounds has different rules. First one, we're gonna name the positive nonmetal or the cation. Remember that when you have a positive charge, it's called the cation. Number two, we're gonna name the negative nonmetal, changing the ending to ide. And the negative nonmetal, it's called anion. Three and four are the different rules. If we have two, two or more cations, which is positive nonmetals, we use prefixes only if we have two or more. And in an anion, we're always going to use a prefix. What does all this mean? We have a prefixes here, all right? Mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, deca. Those are the prefixes. So, um, saying that, we're going to start the practice so that you understand the rules I'm saying. And we're going to start with a simple compound that most of you already know. Carbon and oxygen. Carbon has a charge of 4 and oxygen has a charge of 2. How am I going to make this 2 become a 4? I put a 2 in oxygen and that's my chemical compound. CO2. Which is the positive nonmetal? Carbon. So I'm gonna name carbon first, because carbon is positive. Carbon. And because it's positive, I don't change anything. Which is the negative? Oxygen. And to oxygen, since oxygen is the negative, I need to change the ending to either. All right? Carbon. But it also says, in anions, we also use prefixes. What number do we have here? A2. What is the prefix of 2? D. So it's carbon dioxide. This is the name of CO2. Carbon dioxide. All right, this is how we name covalent compounds. So we're going to make another example. With other nonmetals. Let me grab let's see. Boron nitrogen. Let's grab carbon again with a charge of positive two. Charge of positive four. Alright, same thing. Carbon charge of positive 4, chlorine charge of negative 1. So here chlorine, I'm gonna, I need to make it a 4, so I put a 4. My rule says first, name the positive. I have my positive, which is carbon. Again, carbon. Then chlorine is the negative. I need to change the ending to white, so it's going to be chloride. But my rule 4 tells me that I'm going to put the prefix first. What's the prefix for? Tetra. So it's carbon. Tetra. Chloride. Alright, carbon tetrachloride. Because we changed the ending to I. Okay, so this is how we name those uh, nonmetals. All right, let's try this one. Silicon has a charge of plus four, and phosphorus has a charge of negative three. Can I make this uh, four or three, or this three or four? No, so we go to, to a common denominator. So I'm gonna put a three here and a four here, all 
Okay. First, I'm gonna name the positive nonmetal, which is silicon. Silicon. All right. And my rule tells me that if I have two or more cations, use the prefixes. Here I have three, so I need to use it. So it's gonna be tricilicon, four phosphorus, tetra. Phosphorus, I need to change the end to I, so it's phos five. So this is the name of this one, tricilicon tetraphosphide. So as you can see, the naming, it's, it's, maybe it's not that hard. Maybe it's a little bit confusing because we're just um, starting to see it. But it's not hard, all right? Let me look for another example. Boron, boron has a charge of plus three. And let's use oxygen as negative two. All right, boron and oxygen. Can I make this um, three a two or this two a three? No, so I put, I exchange my numbers, right? Boron has two, and my root tells me if I have two or more, I'm gonna use a prefix. So I know that two is, is D. So it's di, boron. I have three oxygens, so it's tri. Oxygen, I need to change the ending to ide try outside okay and this is how how it's done now what happens if you only have one negative nonmetal like in the case of I'm gonna use carbon and oxygen again because this one can work the same way because um, carbon can have a charge of positive 4 or positive 2 so this time we're gonna use carbon as a charge of positive 2 Carbon positive 2, oxygen negative 2, equal to 0, so that's my chemical compound, all right? It's CO. Okay, that's it. So it tells me, if I have two or more, I use prefixes on the classroom. I only have one, I don't need a prefix. But it tells me, in an anion, if you, you always use a prefix. So if I only have one oxygen, I'm going to use mono, all right? So first, my rule number one tells me name the positive metal, non-metal, sorry, so it's carbon. Rule two, continue with the non-metal, that's negative charge and change the ending to I, which is oxide, and use always the prefix, carbon monoxide. All right? So this is it, this is how, how you name. Yeah, maybe I'm gonna make one or two more examples if, if it's not clear yet. Let's combine germanium with uh, sulfur. Sulfur is negative two. So this I just need a two here, all right, to, to make it a four, and that's gonna be equal to zero. So my roof uh, first tells me name the positive nonmetal. So I'm gonna name germanium. It doesn't have any numbers, so I don't use any prefix. And then I have a sulfur. So for it's the negative one, the negative one I need to change the ending to I again. So it's gonna be sulfide, but it has a two here. So I look at my table and I look for the prefix. So it's germanium di sulfide. All right? And that is how we name those nonmetals. We can make another one, and I'm going to use hydrogen in this example. Hydrogen, when we had the homework, a few of you put that hydrogen in another nonmetal was a covalent bond, and it is, because hydrogen, even though it's on, on the first part of your periodic table, it is a nonmetal, all right? 
So if you have hydrogen and another uh, non-metal, uh, you need to change it. So let's combine this. Let's combine hydrogen and phosphorus. Hydrogen has a charge of positive 1 and phosphorus a charge of negative 3. So I need to convert hydrogen into a 3. So my chemical compound is H3P. Alright? So my rules tells me first the nonmetal, positive nonmetal, hydrogen. How many hydrogens do we have? Three. And the rules tells me if I have two or more, I put a prefix. So if I have three, I'm gonna use the prefix. So I have three. So let's try. Try hydrogen. Phosphorus is the negative one. I'm gonna change the ending to I in phosphorus. How many phosphorus do I have? One. What is the prefix of one? Mono. Try hydrogen. No number. It's one. Mono. Phos. Five. All right. So that's the name of the last example. H3P. Try hydrogen. Mono phosphide. I hope it's clear, and if it's, if it's not, remember we're going to have a, a Zoom class next week where we're going to clear that. Have a nice day, guys.